<laughs> well, w welcome, Coach Bizarnik. Um, on behalf of the county commissioners, we want to welcome everyone here this evening. This is a, uh, uh, a program that we've been doing, I guess, for six or seven years now um, for the annual baseball recognition event. Steve Bizarnik had an exemplary collegiate baseball career at Penn State University. And we're all fortunate that Steve moved to Allegheny County in 1971 and joined the faculty of Allegheny Community College. Soon thereafter, he became the college's first head baseball coach. And Coach Pizarnik started, developed, and leads ACM's nationally recognized and revered baseball program. Steve also serves as ACM's athletic director. When you think about Allegheny College of Maryland, you think about baseball. You, you think about Coach Bazarn. It goes hand in hand. For 49 years, generation after generation, he's turned out incredible people, incredible players, who's been very successful in this game we call life. I've said this many times in uh, dealing with Coach Bazarni how much he impacts young people and what he's done not only for this college but for the community but more importantly what he's done for kids individually and I know I'm living proof of it because when I came here I, I had two wonderful parents who did everything for me and I, I was fortunate to have them. He, other than my parents, he's probably the person that's made the greatest impact in my life. I met Steve Bizarnik in May of 1984. At, I was covering the district uh, tournament, baseball tournament, at Allegheny College. Uh, after the game, he was the happiest, kindest man I believe I've ever met up to that point. And 35 years later, he still is. I think I just learned from him by just watching him. He led by example. He never asked you to do something that he wasn't doing. Um, he just worked hard, he, he just always, and I'll tell you, this, uh, this might sound very simple, but I think one of the reasons is he might be one of the nicest human beings you've ever met in your life. You know, he's just genuinely a nice man. And I think that helped him as his baseball coach because he was a great recruiter, um, he didn't lie to kids. Character, integrity, loyalty, a commitment to passion, a commitment to duty, a commitment to the students. He's an incredible individual, he's a Hall of Fame baseball coach. 49 years of dedicated service to Allegheny College of Maryland and to the community. Uh, kind, uh, generous, earnest, humble, and one hell of a great baseball coach. He loves baseball. He loves baseball almost as much as he loves people. And I don't know that I've ever met anybody who cared, genuinely cared for, for people like Steve Bazarian. And everybody, everybody thinks that I would credit him more as a baseball coach, and, I, and obviously he's one of the greatest baseball coaches in the country, but I credit him more as a, as a human being, as a, as a person, what he did for me. But I also remember when my mom and dad died, and I, I don't might get emotional, but he, he was there for me as, like I said, as he was my second dad. And uh, <laughs> it, it's really hard to say how thankful I am that, that God put me with Coach Steve Bizarni. I, I just would say the thing that epitomizes Steve best to me is the love of his family. Uh, he, he's not one to open up about himself. Uh, he finds himself to be the least interesting person in the world. And um, all Steve wants to ever talk about is you. When you're with Steve, you're the most important person in the, in the world. You're an incredible person. You're an incredible father, an incredible husband. Um, it's just, uh, you're an amazing, amazing person. I think nationally he's known as a, as a great, great baseball coach. But uh, I'm here to tell you, he's a greater man than he is a baseball coach. And he's one of the greatest in the country for sure. He, he, Hall of Fame coach fairly early in his career. He, he's won a lot of games, won a lot of championships. He's affected a lot of young people's lives, helped their lives become better. And baseball, he is the standard for which baseball begins, carries on, and ends in our area because he's just the best there is. And uh, nobody teaches the game, loves the game, understands the game, and shares the game of baseball any better than Steve Zarnick does. Coach, 
35 years ago, it was you and I that took that journey. Days after my retirement, you sent me a handwritten note. In that note, you said, I just handed you the ball and you scored a touchdown. No coach, we scored a touchdown. Thank you, June 10th, 2019 is your day. Please join us up here. Thanks, sir. This is an Allegheny County proclamation to make Monday, June 10th, 2019, Steve Bazarnik Day in Allegheny County. And it reads as this. Stephen George Vizarnik has dedicated nearly 50 years of his life to Allegheny College of Maryland and its stellar baseball program. Head, head baseball coach Vizarnik started, developed, and leads ACM's nationally recognized baseball program and has won over 1,400 games. Coach Vizarnik has the distinction of being inducted into three collegiate halls of fame. Under his leadership, Coach Vizarnik's baseball teams have won nine district championships and played in the NJCAA World Series nine times. Coach Pizarnik has coached players who succeeded to become professionals employed in the major leagues, and Coach Pizarnik has brought and continues to bring positive national media attention to Allegheny County. Therefore, we, the Board of County Commissioners, wish to highly commend Stephen George Pizarnik, highlight his exemplary life, and proclaim Monday, June 10th, 2019, as Steve Pizarnik Day in Allegheny County, Maryland and encourage all individuals to reflect on his achievements and contributions that he's brought our community. And Allegheny County and Allegheny College of Maryland and the lives of his many baseball players. Congratulations. <laughs> citation from uh, Mark Widmeyer on behalf of the governor. I got a little story to tell you <laughs> when I do this. This guy's always been Besneric to me. Every time I refer to him, it's Besneric. Just read his name, make up what you want. 1971, there was a trio that moved to Allegheny College. Linda Mellon, Bob Kirk, and Steve Bezanarek. <laughs> I'll call you Bezanarek. Right. But uh, I'm, I'm going to let him tell you the story about a fellow that we all got to know out there. We referred to him as Nut Nut. He won't tell you, but someday just ask him. <laughs> The Governor of the State of Maryland to Steve Bazarnik. Greetings, be it known that on behalf of the citizens of this state, in recognition for a well-deserved tribute to honor you as the head basketball coach for 48 years with Allegheny College of Maryland, leading to over 1,450 victories, guiding your teams to 23 Maryland JUCO championships, participating in the NJCAA World Series nine times, 53 of your former players have gone on to be drafted and signed a professional baseball, basketball, baseball career mm -hmm. contracts. As well as the people of Maryland, we join with our friends and players and many admirers in expressing our great respect, gratitude, and best wishes for continued success. We are pleased to confer upon you this sixth day of June 
a citation from the governor signed by Governor Larry J. Hogan, Lieutenant Governor Boyd J. Rutherford, and Secretary of State John Wobensman. Stephen? Congratulations. Say anything? Would you like to say anything? He's got his notes. <laughs> Before you're hanging. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> well, first words out of my mouth were, wow. I'll tell you what. It, uh, it, people say the nicest things and uh, very, very fortunate. Uh, come to Cumberland a long time ago and uh, just people, you people are just too much. It's, just, it's, it's tough to keep tears away, but, uh, but anyhow, it's, uh, it's been a great ride and all of you people that, uh, players, film was great, uh, support's great, support at Allegheny College has always been great and uh, I just, Thank you, and uh, it's, uh, as uh, Phil Rizzuto used to say, he used to announce to the Yankees after playing for him for, what, 10, 15 years, he's a holy cow, and it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's wonderful, it's wonderful, and thank you so much. But, uh, but I want to thank the county commissioners for this honor, and I really want to thank Bretta, Ryan Hart, April Hickson, and David Jones for doing the work in the background. Uh, but uh, it's hard to believe it's been 48 years since Kathy and I came down uh, from State College. And uh, I tell you, we got here, love the people, love the area, and uh, we j it, it just, uh, the college was great, and we were just hoping, you know, we'd get a call back. And, uh, and we did, and it was a positive. So here we are, but uh, it's, uh, it's been a great ride. It's been a great ride. But uh, people I need to thank, and I mean, this is just, when you start thinking about everything, there's a lot of, lot of people that have been part of us being and having the baseball program that we did at Allegheny College. And uh, I mean, with, without the help and the people, the support, it just, it, it wouldn't have happened. But uh, so when you honor me, you honor everybody that had a part in all that. Players, people, uh, administration, etc., etc., etc. But uh, but anyhow, it's always been, and us and we, not I and me, and that's that's what this whole thing is about. And uh, I really appreciate the support. But uh, start with my family. Kathy's here today. Christy couldn't make it, but uh, never complain. Three thousand games, including the fall games, at least, and that's, that's a lot of time. That's a lot out of time. And uh, always, always a warm meal. Don't <laughs> 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 oh, cool, let that out. But, but anyhow, uh, the college community at AC, ACC at one time, ACM now, uh, they've always been so good to us. Uh, the administrators uh, have supported uh, athletics, and in our case, baseball. Uh, faculty, uh, same thing, support staff, and our departments, maintenance and transportation. And we've had I mean, a lot of help from that end as well. But uh, anyhow, uh, transportation-wise, I'll just bring you back a story. A couple of years ago, we were coming up 90, uh, to 97, coming up you know, to uh, Morgantown, uh, whatever that road is over there. But anyhow, <laughs> our linkage goes out in a bus, a Leroy Cessna does a great job. We get the kids out, get them up on the bank, cars going by us 80 miles an hour, and that guy put the link each together so we could get home that night. And uh, just the little experiences like that, and, uh, and the support, the support. Dr. Bambera, uh, Dr. Connor, you've, you've done a great job 
uh, in supporting what we do. Uh, players, get, or, uh, coaches can't go between the lines, and uh, and we need you need grinders, guys that you know get after it, and uh, people that refuse to lose. And there are some people here today. All the players were like that, and uh, we. It, 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 it's just, uh, it's fun. They were tough. They were tough. In case in point, a couple years ago, we were, uh, we were one run away from going home and nothing else uh, <coughs> happening as far as uh, the rest of the season was going. But uh, we get to the top of the ninth inning, we're down one run, they're throwing the ball around after getting two outs, and they thought, hey, it's over. Well, it wasn't over. <laughs> but uh, we had a walk. Bill Ellis got a walk. Jason Leader got a uh, single to center field. And uh, Chad uh, Gordon hit a ball, gap shot, and both runs scored. And we get that game. We had to went, uh, get, get through the bottom of the ninth, got through that, won the district, and went back to the World Series. So it, it's it, games like that. And there were a couple other ones too. Tommy Reams was in one game. A couple years ago, we came back at the end, and uh, but uh, it's it's been fun. It's been fun. One other time, Jr. Uh, was pitching. Uh, we played Seminole, Oklahoma, and that's in the day when they were uh, 75 and uh, five or whatever they were, and they had uh, uh, pretty good pretty good ball club. Okay, they had two teams. One went that one, one went that one. They played four games on Saturday. So you could do that then. Now it's, it's back to 56 games. But uh, we ended up playing them one night, and it got late because the games before that, that day were running late. So I went out to take, I think it was JR, I think it took JR out, but it was 1.30 in the morning. And uh, the sprinkling system came on. <laughs> so uh, we, we, we had it all. And we were very fortunate to, they weren't real happy either. Because the next day, the team that lost that game had to come back the next day at 12 o'clock for the middle of Georgia. So it's, uh, it, it worked out for us. But that was a run. That's that trophy right there. Uh, those guys, and uh, let's see, where? Rod? Yeah, Rod Smith's here. He played on that team with, uh, with JR. But, uh, but anyhow, it, it's been, you know, uh, been great that way. Players, they, they're tough, they get after it. Uh, but anyhow, uh, the other thing I'm even more proud of, and, and we love to see everybody. We had six guys playing the big leagues. Okay, we love to see everybody playing the big leagues, but that doesn't happen. Okay, I always tell the kids I stack of baseball cards like that. That's minor league players. Okay, that means you need to get an education. Stack like that. Okay, you got the big leagues. Stay there, you'll make a lot of money. But uh, but anyhow, education, education first, and uh, a lot of our uh, players were able to go on and do that. In fact, uh, a lot of went on to serve, serve uh, either our country or our community. Uh, Timmy Piles, who caught for us, uh, played back a number of years ago, of course, but uh, he, uh, uh, state policeman for uh, Maryland State Police in what, 30 years? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 30 years. And uh, wow, he gave of himself for the community, and uh, we've had uh, the boy hit that double I was talking about a little bit ago. He ended up uh, uh, he's with the uh, uh, DC police now. In fact, I think he came down through when the naval thing happened down in Baltimore a couple years ago. He came out of a helicopter and went down through that building. So I mean, we just that that that, that makes it that makes it you know they get their educations and uh, they're able to move on. But uh, and we've had. Uh, <coughs> Even some of the people have been drafted played in the big leagues from here. Uh, Steve Klein, Joe Bimel went to Duquesne, Klein went to West Virginia, Siebel, West Virginia, Belinda went back to Penn State for a little bit. So they were, they had their minds uh, pointed in, in the right direction. So, but uh, I know John Cruck had a great career, but he ended up, uh, he was going to East Carolina, but ended up getting drafted and uh, things worked out for him. So, but anyhow. Uh, <laughs> The other thanks I need to bring up is our assistant coaches over the years, and we've had a lot of them, and, uh, and we couldn't have done without 
and there's some here today that helped us. And uh, it was, it, it's great to have them come back and be part of the program, and uh, they, did a, they did a number. Uh, along the way, <coughs> Leo Mazzoni and Sam Palazzo spent close 14, 15 years. They needed a place to work out, uh, so they came out and uh, uh, worked out with us, and then they just hung out for a number of years. Our players had big league coaches at this level, and uh, you know, just a thanks to them for you know giving their time. But it, uh, it, it was a good time, good time. And both those guys are top of the line, uh, big league coaches at the time. I think Sam's still with Minnesota, so front office, whatever. Uh, and then the other guy, I'll give you a trivia question: What guy from the area has got 23, 24 years with the? Uh, I'm gonna give it away with a big league club, and he's as as a coach, and he's never played one day of organized baseball, professional baseball. What? Leo was out there. He was tough. He threw gas. <laughs> J.R. Purdue. J.R. Purdue. And to be where he is now and do what he's doing. I mean, he's top of the line. He's learned to speak Spanish. When he was with us. I want to do big league stuff. Well, I said, talk to Leo, maybe, because it was pitching, and then uh, call everybody. And the uh, athletic said, if you, knew, if you could speak Spanish, we could work it. Anyhow, mm -hmm. Leo gets him in with the uh, White Sox. And that winter, he went to Winter Ball in Venezuela, met his wife, and picked up the language. And he could speak Spanish better than I could speak. English, <laughs> but uh, it's just it's just done a great job. They call him over to big league camp. Uh, he's a rover now. He's not a uh, he's a part of a coach, but he's not with a particular team. They think a lot of, and uh, but anyhow, they uh, they they'll bring him over to big league camp so he, he can uh, communicate with some of the Spanish speaking uh, players. So great, great guy. Good job. Uh, there's a couple other people I'd like to thank real quick. Uh, City Parks and Recreation. I know uh, Ruben Lee does our field still, and uh, but he uh, that was back in the day. Uh, George, Gene Mason, and uh, Deb Payton were doing it. And uh, when we first came. When I first came here. We had to go to uh, Donahue Field to play. So every day we went down there to practice and we played down there for three years. And uh, but eventually things worked out out at the college, and it's, it's really, really, really gotten gotten better. And uh, we thank uh, David Jones for some of that too. The uh, scoreboard we have now looks great. I just had a comment today from one of the former players. Wow. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's a thank you to you. Uh, also the media. Uh, our paper uh, paper back in the day when we first came here was Suter K. Right? <laughs> and, uh, and uh, his buddy, of course, Hung around a little bit, Van Roby, but uh, Steve Luce, hanging loose with Steve Luce, and then today we got uh, Mike Matthews and the guy that I think could write any place in the country, any sports uh, uh, program in the country, whether it's college or a newspaper, and that's uh, Mike Burke. And you saw Mike on there. He's a great writer. It'd be nice if he would get. I told him get all your articles that you've ever written and put them in a book. People will buy it because he did a great job with that. Uh, let's see here, David Jones talked to you. There's two guys I just want to say something about before I uh, sit down. But uh, high school coach, I'm going to say much, but uh, great role model, Bob Melman, Milton High School. And I know you don't know him, but I'll tell you what, he got me turned on to coaching back in the day. And that, uh, that, was, uh, that was great. But he was, he was strict, but he also said, have fun. Don't throw your bats. <laughs> like Yogi and I did back when we were in tenth grade, we, that was we quit that real quick. And then I had a guy that I uh, recruited uh, recruited me to Penn State, and uh, and uh, a guy by the name of Dom Kepler recruited me. Uh, I played for him. We had freshman baseball at the time, and then I helped him coach last year. I was up there in grad school, and uh, just my thing with Dom Kepler, new to game. But he also knew how to handle people, and I think I, I got a little sum from him. But uh, he was—he could talk to anybody, never talked down. It was always 
you know, please, thank you. And uh, this is a guy that uh, also was a, a lieutenant, uh, World War II, taught survival. And uh, this was 1943 in Chapel Hill. And uh, because he could handle people, they sent him to pick up somebody that uh, at the time was the best, and still is, as far as I'm concerned, best hitter in all of baseball. And he was a little moody, but he went, picked him up, and Ted Williams. <laughs> Ted Williams was in that camp. In fact, Leo Mazzoni's uh, Johnny Sane, his pitching guru was in that camp. But they played, Don Kepler was their coach. <coughs> they played 40 games, and that was back in the day they played because of uh, the war, the morale, and all that good stuff. But, uh, but anyhow, uh, they even called Don when, uh, if you remember, 90 years ago, uh, Ted Williams had a tough time in the, uh, the World Series late 40s, and uh, they called Don. Johnny Pesky, he's in the Hall of Fame too, shortstop, and uh, he played in that team as well. But anyhow, had Don come up and kind of settle Ted Williams down a little bit. But uh, just, just uh, you know, being around that guy was just, just amazing, and uh, I owe a lot, I think, to him for, for that. But, uh, but anyhow, I, you know, thank you all for coming. You're the greatest. I love you all, and uh, you, hey, uh, you've been great. Thanks to the county commissioners for this honor. And uh, anyhow, practice is tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. <laughs> 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 Coach, I don't think there's anyone more deserving of this honor and, and having a day named after him than you have. And, and I think that the proof is this is by far the biggest crowd we've ever had for one of these ceremonies, for sure. Soul hot dogs. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and so uh, Coach Bizarnik joins um, Senator Jay Glenn Blit Bell, who is a baseball advocate, as well as baseball greats Lefty Grove, Bobby Robertson, Leo Mazzoni, and Sam Perlazzo on our wall. Um, as well as Bucky Shriver, who was honored for his work remembering uh, the late Lefty Grove. So this concludes this part of the event. We would like to give a special thanks to uh, Dr. Bambera, ACM president, for joining us today, all of Coach Bizarnik's former players for coming out tonight, and, uh, and, and it's just a really impressive career. So thank you all.